Good morning. Welcome to RV Daily Driver and happy Father's Day to all those dads out there. It's been a while since I made a video so I thought I'd start up again talk a little bit so everybody knows summer is getting here so that's a big deal right so if you're looking to buy a class B RV there's a couple things I'd say you should definitely think about so as you know I bought this RV we have a uh, three young kids so my thought process was that we could use this as the name of the channel states you know RV daily driver for driving around daily and I'm telling you it's been a huge success uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about COVID-19. I think everybody's been dealing with that their own particular way. But I will tell you, one thing the RV does offer during this pandemic is kind of just in your own little bubble. So anywhere you want to go, guess what? You're taking your bathroom with you. And what that's really doing is that's really reducing the risk and exposure that you have to other people. I mean, you know, you got young kids and you know you can't really control what they do. You know, it's tough to put them in a mask. It just doesn't happen, right? But if you got your own bathroom, it's not a big deal. I mean, kids need to go to the bathroom. It's your own germs. So you're not spreading those around to everybody because it's just your internal, you know, nuclear family and that's it. And then it's not a big deal. You know, you want to go on a long trip, you got to stop and get some food. You know, if you're in your car, guess what? You need to get out of the car. You need to go inside. You need to sit at a table that someone else has already sit, sat at or multiple people have already sat at. So really by having the RV, you know, you want to stop somewhere. You got your own refrigerator. You got your own, you know, stove that's inside the RV you're 100% self-contained you know you can wash your hands more often you can just keep more stuff that you know that's gonna protect you and keep you safe I mean right up here up top you know you throw a couple gloves you get out you got to pump gas you throw a glove on you pump the gas you throw the glove away you get back inside you know what I'm saying either way you're all 100% self-contained and that's really what's gonna help you you know protect yourself and I can tell you that it's been a real minimal impact on us you know, during this whole pandemic. I mean, people are complaining staying at home, but guess what? You can get out and do your thing. It's not that big a deal you know, to travel if you're 100% self-contained. And I will show you an example of that a little bit later on in this video. We did a trip down to a drive-through safari. And I'll tell you that if you're looking for something to do, and you just want to make sure you're a little bit extra safe, this drive through safari down here in Ohio is really good. I mean, if you're looking to get out with the kids, but still keep them safe, if you're a little bit worried, not quite comfortable going out now, you definitely need to go out, hit a place like this. I mean, you just stay in your own car. I mean, minimal interaction with other people, and it really works well. I know some people are on the opposite spectrum of that, and they don't really, they're not super worried about it. I think that's a little bit over the top, but either way, there's definitely a balance by having the RV. You know, more people are getting out there, more people are traveling, but definitely by having the RV, you can protect yourself a little bit more, you know, if that's the thing what you're looking for. And I can tell you, you know, we drove to that safari park, and really I can see more and more RVs on the road. So, you know, the real key is, is if you're looking for that RV, you know, do the research, you know, if you're watching this channel now, you're definitely looking to get into Class B. And I can tell you Class B is kind of that real balance between, you know, having to have an RV and having to have your own car. You know, this has really allowed us to drive around daily in this RV, and it works great for kids. If you have young kids, that are you know either potty trained, getting potty trained, and you're that parent out there right now. I'm sure you've drove down the road on the expressway, and as you're driving down the road, your kids in the back going, "Dad, Dad, I need to go to the bathroom." And really, for this, it's just, "Hey, buddy, get up, hit the bathroom. It's right there. It's not a big deal." And it's, I'm telling you, for travel time, it's truly a stress reducer. And it's really easy to travel and the more kids you have you know the easier this definitely makes it we also have a dog and the 
dog truly loves to ride in the RV. It's funny that when you open the door, the dog runs out and stands at the door of the RV because it's comfortable. It's an easy way to travel for sure. So, yeah, I think that if you're looking to get something during this time, you're trying to make yourself and your family just a little bit safer, you know, a little bit less exposure, you know, the Class B is really the way to go. And like you've watched my videos before, it's kind of easy to justify because you can really replace your primary car with this RV. I mean, I live in Michigan. We've had this RV for around 12 months. And I'm telling you that even in the winter, we drove this RV a lot. So, well, stay with me now. Stay with me. Stay with me. There we go. All right. Welcome back. So, yeah, 12 months in Michigan in the winter, we still use the RV. We have 100, 100 yeah, that would be crazy. But anyhow, we have the almost 21,000 miles on this RV in less than 12 months. So me and my wife had a discussion this, you know, do we travel more because we have the RV or are we just traveling more because the kids are getting older? And I think definitely in my opinion, my wife may differ, but I'm telling you, just because we have the RV, it makes travel so much easier. So you're more just adept to do stuff. I mean, we'll take those long trips because I know in the back, the kids are good. I'm not stopping some random place or middle of the expressway and my kids come back screaming that, you know, he needs to go to the bathroom. We have the ability to let them go to the bathroom. You know, if the kids get super cranky, there's a DVD player in the back and a TV. Just throw on a movie. I know a lot of parents are against that and we try to do books and stuff like that first, but at some point, you know, that, that TV and DVD player is kind of the saver. We drove to, Ohio when we went to look at the safari and even nowadays you know as technology advances I was able to just throw my laptop in the back on the counter hot spot it to my phone and my kids are watching Netflix driving down the road you know that's some point that if you're taking those long trips with your kids they're gonna get tired you're gonna have to give something to them that's not so educational you know they can only read a book or draw or something like that but I'm telling you this has truly been a pleasure to go out and you know do those trips because you know it's enjoyable to drive I mean you know you're a parent and your patience only lasts so long so you know having that kind of that outlet in the back for your kids that they can do something it's really really great for that for sure so one downfall I like to talk about and I kind of alluded to that to the beginning of this right is this is the on the Sprinter chassis, but it's long. It's around almost 24 feet long. So there's two air conditioners that run in this RV. So you have the, basically the chassis air conditioner, just like you have in your car. You know, it sits up front, blows out air conditioning, works really well, but there's kind of a limit to it. And it's kind of all about positioning. So let me show you what you need to do to actually position the air conditioner so that you can take care of your kids in the back. So it's not uncommon that you get in this RV after it's been sitting a while, the temperature outside may be around 80 degrees, but inside the RV, you know, the thermostat on the wall up here, it'll be showing that it's, you know, 101 degrees. So let me just kind of go through the procedure that we use to kind of cool down the RV. You know, how do we get the back a little bit cool and then how do we really maintain that because it's really key that you know you don't want to have this RV running the generator driving down the road all the time do we do it absolutely is there kind of a gray area on whether or not you can do that and drive down the road eh, I don't know I mean you know every state probably has laws that are slightly different but definitely run the generator to run the air conditioner that does work you can't drive down the road doing that do I suggest you do it no I mean only in those extreme circumstances where you really need to I mean that's when you do it but hey I mean if you got kids in the back and they're melting in the heat you, know, you definitely need to fire up the generator cool off the back you know once it meets the a good temperature 
you know, that'll allow the, you know, the chassis air conditioner to really, you know, catch up and allow you to maintain that. Yesterday we drove the gauge on my, the gauge, yeah, the temperature sensor on the dash said it was 91 degrees outside. We were only running the dash air conditioner and it was keeping the back, you know, at a comfortable level. The kids weren't sweating, they weren't, weren't melting in the back. So it's definitely possible, but you know, the real key is you gotta think about that. You know, if you're at the dealer, something that I really honestly didn't think about when I bought the RV was, you know, hey, is the back gonna be cool enough? And I didn't think about it, but the first trip we took, you know, the kids are in the back melting, and here I am, Jeremy, running down the expressway, you know, running the generator, cooling off the back, and the propane tank doesn't last forever. Is the propane tank expensive to fill up? No, I mean, you can fill it up for around 30 bucks. It's not crazy, but it doesn't also last forever. That's kind of an issue that, you know, you gotta think about. And the next part you gotta think about too is, you know, how do I fill that up and where can I fill it up at? Not every place, you know, has that thing that'll fill up RVs. So definitely that's a big key too. You need to really call ahead and be like, hey, listen, can you fill up my RV? You know, is it possible? And then yes or no. I can tell you that, you know, I have a place right by me. It's easy, it's cheap, they're really proficient. They, they really just do a great job. So, you know, get that location that's close to you and do that. But again, those are the things that when you're at the dealer, you don't think about, yeah, this offers a ton of benefits, but it takes you, you know, a while. And I would say it's probably take you a year to get into the really know everything your RV is capable of and learn all the ins and outs. And, you know, just like we talk about, how do you position the air conditioner vents in the front so that oh, 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 you guys don't want to be with me today, huh? I see that now. Let me adjust that a little bit. There we go. All right. Welcome back. So yeah, that's definitely something you have to think about on how you're adjusting those vents and then how they're going to really help you to cool the back. That's a big thing. So let me get parked up here. And what I'll do is, I'll kind of walk you through some of the controls that how you position the vents for the front and the back so that you can cool the back and then people that are in the back aren't melting and it actually makes it useful and comfortable so that you can use the front and the back as you drive down the road. So, all right, let me get parked and I'll cut back in where I'll show you what we're doing here. Right, so let me talk about the front. So the front air conditioning, it's kind of a no brainer. I mean, it's an it's an up and down right here. Really has a lot of capacity. In it. You know, it really does a good push to push out the air conditioning. So the key for this is, you know, this vent placement needs to be kind of almost all the way up and all the way to the right. And when you do that, you can really start to feel it pushing back and blowing back to the outside. Hi, morning, Coco. So around here, you know, this is the midway point of the RV, and if you maintain that and you have those in the right position. You can really feel the air conditioning coming back up into here. So back up in here as it's running, you can feel the, the wind definitely push back into here. And I will say one thing that definitely take a look and don't open this, don't turn this, this uh, fan on because if you do that's, if you do turn that fan on really truly, it's gonna suck all the cold air out and it's not useful. All right, so back here, this is something you really need to, takes a while to learn. So to turn on your generator, you're just gonna go back here, hit the generator button, auto gen, manual operation, hit the start button. You can hear it starting up and it will kick off. So definitely something to remember though is it takes a while. So if we come back here, the generator needs to actually build up some capacity or just build up some energy basically. So the first key to know whether or not you're gonna have that power. If you wait here, listen to it run, the microwave is gonna be the first thing that actually kicks on. And it's a process, so it takes a little while before it'll actually kick on. So that's really something to think about that 
you know, it's not going to kick up right away. And your kids are going to be in the back or whoever you have in the back. They're definitely going to be complaining. But hear that beep? That's your first indicator to know like, all right, hey, cool. Microwave is working. Everything is good. Eventually, the air conditioning will kick on. But it's going to take a second. I mean, you're here with me right now and we're waiting. You know, think about you have a bunch of people in the back that are truly waiting for that air conditioner to kick on because it's, you know, a hundred and some degrees in here and you really want to get the air conditioner going and cool it down because nothing makes you grumpier than if you're super hot, you know what I'm saying? Especially kids or, you know, even me as an adult, like I just don't want to be hot and sweaty. So you need to wait for that time. So it's definitely taken a while. So what you do is you kick, pick back up here Take a look and make sure that this is on cool and this is on auto. All right, so currently the temperature inside the RV is 78 degrees. Here you go, you're gonna adjust it up and down. I say keep it around 70, and you know, that's fair to me. And remember too, you're, you're in an RV, so it's not going to, you know, get you down to 60 some degrees. I mean, if you run it forever, maybe it's possible, but remember, it's definitely gonna be a minute you know, before it gets cool. It's gonna take you a while, you know. And I think another key up here is, you know, there's two adjustments on this. And you can see the little black in there, open and closed, right? So that's gonna be important to where you put that. It also has one here on the back. So just make the adjustment. You know what I usually do is I'll leave this one open and the one up here in the front, I'll close it down. Because remember, you know, right now you're gonna have two things going on. You're gonna have the front pushing the air back this way, right? And then the back is trying to catch up, but once you start and get it you know, down to a comfortable temperature, it'll definitely be able to maintain that, you know, for sure. And, you know, push the air back to the back so that it's not super hot. And that's really gonna be key is, you know, you don't wanna run down the road, you know, running both the air conditioner and the generator. And there we go. See that kicked off? You can hear it running now. And it's not going to be cool right away. We have this one closed, and then really the key, you can see this is going directly down onto these people in the back seat. So this is kind of the, the setup we use to run down the road. It'll take a while to actually cool it down, but it's definitely worth it, and that's going to really keep you cool. You know, when you got those people in the back and they're sitting back here, you know, they're trying to get cool. This is kind of the setup that's going to keep you cool. So. I would encourage you that if you're looking to buy the RV, test out this procedure and see how that cool it does actually feel in the back back there. So, all right, I'm gonna close this video out. So if you like it, hit the like button. You know, also hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video. Next one, we're gonna talk about the 20,000 mile review, some pros and cons. So see you then and take care out there.